I actually was only seven years old when I read um, a series of novels that were um, a, a series of novels about a nurse called Sue Barton. And she started as a student nurse and um, actually did every kind of nursing you could possibly imagine. And I never changed my mind after that. I can remember my father really encouraging me to go to medical school and I just knew that the care aspect, the time with the patients, um, was something that I was in incredibly interested in. I did your typical candy striping at, during high school and that just reinforced it. I worked with some amazing nurses at the VA who really encouraged me and, and were wonderful role models. When I knew it was, there were so many times I've known this is the right career for me. I've now been in this um, career for 40 years and I've had a lot of different roles, staff nurse, head nurse, um, head of a children and youth project, and then all levels of academic um, involvement, including researcher, administrator, teacher. And to this day, it's always about the personal connection, whether the personal connection was with a patient and just being able to be there with that patient at a very vulnerable time for them. For me, it was children and their families. <clears throat> and being able to be kind of witnessing that um, time and being able to help them. Uh, for, for me, I, I always knew that you just know it when it happens. But I've also had that same experience with undergraduate students when they just, the light bulb goes on. I had it with PhD students when the light bulb went on. Um, and, um, and I've had it with colleagues when we are around the table and discussing a research project and you get really excited and you, you know that you're bringing in insight as a nurse that no one, that not to say no one else could bring that insight, but that you have a unique insight as a nurse researcher and um, collectively you are really going to make a contribution that will make um, not only other researchers think differently, but certainly clinicians will use your work, etc. So there's been a lot of times in my career. I have never spent, honestly, a day thinking I wish I had chosen another profession. They have to stay connected. Um, obviously, the, with the world that they are preparing their students for. So if you're an um, undergraduate faculty member, faculty member working with undergraduate students, you must understand that world of practice. And I don't know any other way to do that without spending some time, and I'm not talking about even direct care, I'm talking about just how the health system works, how patients experience the healthcare delivery system, what perhaps you as a leader in nursing education might offer them. Uh, you, because then you really know what the demands of a new graduate are, is, are going to be, and you know what kinds of supports they have when they um, begin their career, and maybe when they should and, and might feel good about um, what they do and then wanting to come back to learn more. If you're a, an advanced practice nurse faculty member, you really, um, not only is it a national requirement to be certified, but in terms of having a regular practice, but I Again, unless you know the world of practice and what, as a practitioner, what you would be um, involved in and your students would be involved in, I don't, I don't know how you make those decisions. If you're a nurse researcher, that, you know, when you're involved in interdisciplinary teams and you know the kinds of new, if you're reviewing grants, for different associations or for the national gov for the government at NIH or some of the other big um, groups that fund research, PCORI, you really have a, you're in a much better place to advise colleagues and students. And if you're living the academic role, you can certainly reflect on and help students to think about what am I gonna really need for tomorrow's world? What we all have to remember is that it is no one in today's world of healthcare or frankly any other organization is going to have the same career trajectory as I had.
I would wish that for people because I've had a phenomenal career trajectory and have been mentored by the most amazing people. But the world has changed so much in 25, 40 years that the way I learned it is just not even, it wouldn't begin to get people the knowledge and skills. So that's why you have to stay immersed in whatever that is. That's why as a dean, I usually teach once a year because if I don't, I don't understand what the students' challenges are, what the faculty's challenges are. Um, I don't, you know, I don't really ha have to be in a position to think about, okay, what is it that this student needs to really be successful? The thing that has struck me the most since I decided to be dean here, and, and they accepted me, was when people ask me where I'm going to be dean, and I say the Duke University School of Nursing. The, the uniform response is, that is such a wonderful school. And I think they mean the school, I think they mean the university. It, it has just, I mean, I'm even talking my nieces and nephews are like, that is awesome. <laughs> and um, that says so much about what's here, which frankly, I have to discover. You can look at a website, you can, you know, I can see the points of excellence, there's no question. Um, but it's not until you're here and you're talking about students, about their experience, that you really get a sense of how faculty go over and above. Um, but there is a level of energy in this building that you can't deny. And that always, uh, in terms of an organization, that means that people are engaged. And when people are engaged in an organization, magic happens. From what I've heard and read, I think there's a lot of self-reflection going on. And I think this is the time for the new chancellor coming in a year, with a new dean here, with new faculty continuing to come, with the staff expanding, questions about whether the student body should expand. I think it's a good time to just pause, continue the conversations, continue the self-reflection. What is it? that this school does that's unique, or only a handful of schools do. What are the um, strengths that we currently have? And should we build on those? Or should we, are there areas we can expand? Or are there areas that we already have, burgeoning areas that we then want to strengthen? Um, are there really areas we want to take on new or not? And if there are, what, why is that important? Because it's when you have those conversations and you engage a lot of people in them, you can really, because frankly, anything you take on has to have the engagement of people. So you really need to have people um, be able to feel free enough to have those conversations and then know that it's a collective, um, the collective wisdom is always, or I've learned, it's amazingly powerful goes way beyond anything I would have thought of. And, um, and nurses are just like that. You know, they, they know how to, um, <laughs> they're really good at solving problems. Um, but it's the continued conversations about, okay, what is it we really want to do? Not, a, not what does everybody else want us to do, but what do we think we can bring to this that will help move this along, whether it's a Duke University initiative, and of course we wouldn't just choose one thing, or a Duke Medicine initiative. Um, I think we know that when we get a new chancellor and with the healthcare system dramatically changing over the next several years, there's gonna be a lot of opportunities to uh, lend our weight in terms of solving some of the challenges. I think we're gonna to have to be selective about which ones we can really take on and be successful or effective at. Two things. One is I am a, a rabid country music fan. I love the stories. Um, at, music has always resonated with me. And uh, particularly the, uh, I'd say, pre-210. <laughs> the new ones I'm trying to wrap my head around, but I'm not getting there very well. And, um, and I think it's because of the stories that that music tells for me. Um, and that for some reason just really surprises people. I don't know if I look like an opera fan or whatever, which I'm not. Um, I like all kinds of music, but that's my favorite. And I'm pretty much by myself in that in my family. 
<laughs> I don't have a lot of other people who are on that same page. And then the other thing is my military career. People also don't think of that um, as the first thing they think about when they think of me. And um, it was a, a, an amazing experience. It, I think it really shaped my leadership, my servant leadership um, uh, perspective that I, I have a lot of strengths. I have a lot of, have had a lot of wonderful experiences that I think have helped um, my confidence, but I also know that leadership is to be used to, um, frankly, solve problems and further the good, and that's all it's supposed to be used for. And um, so that, and I, and I owe that to the military. I was very young and uh, when I was paying back my college service, and uh, that also surprises. They can't quite get their heads around me having combat boots on, which I did for many years.